Hi, my name is Dean Walker. Uh, my main primary job at, here at Walker Manufacturing is, has been and continues to be product development. Hi, I'm Ted Walker. I work primarily with my dad, Dean, in the product development side of things here in the business. So the ongoing challenge of, of trying to cut grass and do it well in a variety of, of grass conditions, climates, uh, different moisture levels, all those things thrown into the mix, it, it becomes quite challenging. And so uh, it has been a learning process almost from the get-go of trying to cut grass and do it well. At Walker, we're passionate about cutting grass and cutting it well, leaving a beautiful cut. And that really has started with, with Dean's effort over the years. It's kind of crazy to think about being passionate about cutting grass. And when we started this journey years and years ago, I don't think that was on my radar. But it's been interesting through the years how passionate we have become about cutting grass, doing it well, the beautiful cut, uh, the beautiful look that is left from a, a deck that's working well. Most of our deck design has been through trial and error, through seat time, through just spending a lot of time running the machine. Uh, I still really enjoy mowing grass. I mow my own grass and um, almost all the time while I am mowing my grass though, I'm not just thinking about whatever. I'm, I'm looking at, analyzing, thinking about you know, the job that this particular deck is doing, the one that I'm running at the time, uh, you know, what I'm seeing, what could we do to, to change this or change that, make it better. Uh, it's an ongoing process, a process that will never end as long as you're willing to keep working at it. One of the things that you've never compromised on and that, that we'll continue to do is, is putting in the time and effort to make sure that a deck is as good as we can possibly make it. And there's limitations when it comes to designs, but we don't want to ever compromise on putting in the effort, trying as hard as we can um, to get it right. So one of the comments we receive quite frequently is the striping ability of our machine and and honestly this has been something that was really not uh, a focus on the, in the beginning for us but but we think really it is the result of the fact that the deck is symmetrical lends itself to a, a good striping characteristic and that that really is true regardless of whether you have what we call the standard rotation deck or the reverse rotation. The idea is that it's symmetrical underneath the deck and that lends itself to an even consistent striping pattern across the cut width. One of the other benefits of, of this deck style is that it stripes without the bulkiness and the inconvenience of, of having a roller, a striping roller on the back of the deck. We can, we can leave beautiful stripes can leave stripes that attract attention to lawns and we don't have to do it without any, any additional equipment. Lots of people ask, well, what's the right deck for, for me, a reverse rotation deck or a standard rotation deck? And that's kind of a hard question for us to answer sometimes because both decks are, are really good cutting decks and a lot of it just comes down to um, the local climate, the local grass types. Um, and so determining the right type of deck to use in an area um, really needs to be done through, through a, a demo, having a demo done on the properties that you're mowing so that you can determine what's best in your area and hopefully also um, your dealer and distributor have experience as well that, that they can help you choose the right deck for your cutting conditions. Our original deck was a, was a 36 inch deck, then we went to a 42 and then the 48 which you see in front of us here and 
So when we st started working on the 48 inch deck, because the, the deck was larger and bigger blades than a lot, we had more volume of air to deal with. And the more volume of air and material you have to deal with, the greater the challenge of cutting in this area is. And so in order to achieve that, uh, we did quite a few different things, but in general, the, di the divider bars that you see, um, the, the pans in the back of the deck, we also have what we call waste gates right here, which is in order to let some of this pressured air in the middle of the deck have a place to go to escape, to get out from underneath the deck. All those things were done to really address this area right here in the 48. The reverse rotation decks rather than all of the air and material converging together in the middle of the deck, divide the cut material and the air um, individually and actually bring the material around the outside and the material meets in the back of the deck. And so bringing the material together here um, in a different place from where we're also trying to cut grass in the middle of the deck helps us cut very evenly across the width of the deck with the reverse rotation. Both of these decks cut very well but again just looking at the underneath side of the deck you can see that they do it in, a, in pretty vastly different methods as as Ted alluded to really the the best way to determine you know which deck is best for me again is by demonstration putting them on your property your situation and finding out which one works best for you Our collection decks have earned a reputation for leaving a beautiful cut over many years, but we also put a lot of effort into our non-collection decks. The deck we've got here is a DR64, it's for our Model H tractor, it's a very high production deck. On the Model H tractor with its higher ground speed, it creates additional challenges to cut grass and especially on a rear discharge deck like this one. Um, there's also the challenge of um, distributing the cut clippings evenly across the back of the deck. Most rear discharge decks will leave some sort of a pattern of, of cut material on the grass. By putting these baffles on the back of the deck and tuning those baffles, we're able to control the discharge pattern of the deck. Well, I'd say part of the, part of the challenge is not only the, that, the actual cut quality, but the disbursement of the clippings is a big deal in, in the beautiful cut. One of the other effects of having this rear baffle in the deck is that we actually get quite a bit of clipping reduction happening. We call it a rear discharge deck, but there's actually quite a bit of mulching action going on in this deck as well. And it's actually really beneficial because as those clippings are reduced into smaller particles, they disappear that much better into the cut turf. This is our M48 mulch deck. Mulching decks are, are challenging because they're a closed system. There's no, there's no airflow through the deck. And so um, we're basically circulating air underneath the deck. And while we do that, we're also trying to cut grass and distribute grass as evenly as possible. So there are many different ways to do mulching. All of them present their challenges. Um, We've chosen in this particular deck to, to address the mulching issue in a couple ways. One is we, we're using a toothed style blade here. And then we also are using what we call a recirculator hub. Uh, these actually help recirculation of the air and the material underneath the deck uh, to try to achieve the mulching results that, that we want. You might think, well, if you want to get a better cut, you need more lift. But in a mulch deck, a, a higher lift wing on the blade is not necessarily a good thing. Again, because of no discharge, all it does is create more turbulence and therefore it may lay the grass over rather than help stand it up. So uh, the wing on the blade is very critical. We also think our recirculating hubs here help that aspect of actually creating some lift out here on the perimeter of the deck while pushing air down in the center of the, of the blade arc. It's 
probably not possible to know for certain, but I would say that in the last 40 years, there's no single person anywhere that has put in more time doing deck research, development, and testing than my dad. And we're definitely the beneficiaries of all of that, that hard work, that time, that effort. And so we're learning from him. I'm thankful that he's willing to pass on that knowledge to the rest of us. Um, and we're just excited for the future. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, a lot of things that we continue to work on. This idea of, of deck design um, keeps progressing. It, I'm fortunate to not be doing this by myself anymore. Uh, blessed to be working with Ted and with some others here in the company that bring a lot of skills and abilities that I don't necessarily have. So we will continue to, to push ahead with, with the goal of, of beautiful cut. Even with technology and talent and all the things that we have today that I didn't have 40 years ago, though we still feel like there's no substitute for hard work, for seat time, uh, spending time on the grass, trying something, finding out that it doesn't work, cutting it out, redoing it, that type of thing. I don't think we'll ever get away from that. Uh, that's just part of the discipline of trying to make a machine that, that does the job well.